This video is for short rows that you make on the return pass. So for this sample, I've already created a base of two rows. I started with 10 chains and 10 um, simple stitch on each row. So I've made two rows and then I've done the forward pass of the third row. So I'm going to start with the return pass, which is going to be a short return pass. So I will start my return pass like usual for a free floating return pass, which starts with a chain one. Okay, and then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two until I have six loops on my hook. Like so. Okay, so I'll just explain what's going on here. I've got one, two, three, four, five loops of the forward pass that I'm going to leave where they are. Then I've got one, two, three, four, five. So there's my five loops that were worked also in the forward pass, but I've brought them off in the return pass. Now it will be helpful for many if you place a marker on the live loop. So by the live loop, I mean this loop that's sitting here. Okay. So that is the completion of our short row made in the return pass. So now we're going to make the row on top of it, which will create a wedge over here. So this side will be taller than this side. Okay, so we start by skipping this stitch just like we would over at this end. Okay, and we work into the second TSS here. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, three TSS and then the edge stitch just like normal. Okay, so I still have 10 loops on my hook like I did on the normal rows, but you can see there's that extra little row in there. Now there's my marked stitch from my live loops. I'm going to bring that forward. And now I'm going to work the return pass and it's almost a completely normal return pass except until we get to the marker. So we start with our chain one, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until we get to the marked stitch. Okay, now what we're going to do, and this might take a bit of practice, I'm going to put some pictures up on my blog to make it easier. We're going to take the hook out of the live loop over here. You still need that live loop, so don't pull it tight. Okay, then, see we've got our mark stitch here. We need to pick up the vertical bar directly under the mark stitch and just the front vertical bar. Okay, so I'm putting my hook in that front vertical bar and then I'll pick up the live loop again and pull that in tight now. I'll just bring this in nice and close so you can see. So there is that marked stitch and this loop that we've put on the hook here is the vertical bar that was directly below the mark stitch. So if I pull that up, you can almost see it there, okay? Now what we've done is effectively twisted those two stitches together and then we've got the live loop back up there, okay? The next thing that we need to do is yarn over and we're going to pull one, two, three loops. So all the way up to that marked stitch. So there's one, two, three. Okay, I'll bring this marker at the front still. Okay, then we continue the return pass like normal. Okay, now I'll take this marker out so it's easier to see. And then I'm gonna work the next row and then I'll do all of this over again. Um, for anyone who would like to see it repeated, and I'll show you the next step as well. Okay, so this one's just going to be a standard forward pass and return pass. Okay, but when we get to that stitch where we did that twisting, which I'm up to now, see there's two loops, you put your hook under both of those loops. So don't just pick that front one, 
or the top one that's there, you want to go through both. Okay, just treat it like a standard TSS, but put your hook through both loops. Okay, so there's that short row. So remember it was a five stitch short row because we had five loops on this side and five loops on that side. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. So see the fifth loop sort of it encompasses both of these rows. There's that, that's the very end of the short row and we've stretched it up to the row above it as well. And by doing this method, it avoids having holes in the work. So it's bog standard return pass happening here. Okay, now I'm going to repeat this. I'll work a little bit quicker. And I'm not going to mark the stitch this time because sometimes it's easier to see um, and I'd like you to be able to see both, okay? But I'm going to work two short rows, again, both on the return pass. So we start with a standard forward pass. Okay, so I want all the loops on my hook. Then I will chain one. Yarn over, pull through two, four times. So I have six loops on my hook. Two, four, six. Okay, so that is the end of my short row return pass. Okay, now we're doing the row above that short row. Okay, now this time, instead of pulling all of these stitches off, I'm going to add another short row in and I'm going to pull off an extra two. I'll show you. So chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now, if I had have marked that last live loop like I did on the last one, it would be this one here and I can see it. I can tell that it's that stitch because this is the very end of that uh, return pass row, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Okay, now we're going to do the twisting. So I take my hook out of the live loop. Sorry, that's covered up. Then I pick up the stitch immediately after, under the marked stitch, which is not marked in this case. But again, remember, I wanted you to see what it's like not marked. Okay, so they've twisted. Now we yarn over and pull all three of those loops off. Okay, now I'm gonna do another short row. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through two once, then yarn over, pull through two twice. Okay, so that means that the next short row is two stitches wider than the first one because I've done an extra two return pass stitches. Okay, so then we're going to do the forward pass of the next row. So again, that one there, that was the twisted stitch. I'll just do that one again. Can you see the difference? It's a lumpy. Okay, so you put your hook under the lump, which is the two vertical bars there. TSS all the way to the end. Then our standard return pass, but we do have to do that twisted, twisted stitch. There isn't really an official name of it that I know of. And can you see where I'm going to do it? I can because it's got a gap. See, if I try to pull my stitches up, see there's a gap between the edge stitch and the um, forward pass loops, which are still sitting on my hook from before. Getting a little bit of curl in there. Okay, so I'm up to doing the twisted stitch. So take the hook out of the live loop, pick up the loop directly under the marked stitch, and then 
put your hook back into the live loop. Again, remember I deliberately didn't mark the stitch so you could see it. Yarn over and pull through those three loops and then yarn over and pull through two until the end. Okay, now this video is going to get a bit longer but I want to show you another variation. So I will just do another forward pass and standard return pass here. So the technique that I just did then is where the return pass short row that was worked, well, I did two in a row, okay? So the first row was shorter than the second row. Okay, and I'll show you. This is my first row here, it finishes there. And my second short row is above it and it finishes here okay so my first short row is only five stitches wide my second one is six is seven actually okay so you see a smaller short row than a longer short row now i'm going to do the opposite i'm going to do a long one and then a short one on top of it just want you to see the difference okay so we do our standard forward pass all the way to the end. Okay, and I'll, I'll mark the stitches this time. And I'll need two markers. You'll see why. Okay, so I've got 10 loops. Let's check two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Oh, good. Okay, now chain one. I'm going to yarn over, pull through two until I've only got three loops left on my hook. Three? No four and the reason for that is that's my last twisted stitch there so I want it to be at the same width as the last one I don't know if you can see it there but it sticks out a bit to me because it's a bit more lumpy okay so that's my first short row completed okay see there's my forward pass loops from the first row Okay, and I've stopped it there. So now I'm going to do the forward pass of the next row. Remember, ignore that first stitch, which is essentially your new edge. Okay, and I've marked, marked the stitch this time where we're going to do the twisting. Oh, just need to pull a bit more yarn from my ball. Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm going to do a shorter short row above it okay so i'm just gonna do the forward pass okay and this time i'm gonna chain one yarn over pull through two okay and i'm stopping two stitches before that marked stitch so i've got two four six loops on my hook so before I had four and there's those four now I have six as well and I'm going to mark that live loop all right now this is the row above the short rows so this is going to be a standard row but we need to do the twisted stitch action twice on the return pass see there's those marked stitches so chain one, yarn over, pull through two until you get to a marked stitch. So here's our marked stitch. I'm going to pull it to the back. So drop the live loop, pick up the vertical bar directly below the marked stitch, and then pick the live loop up again. Yarn over, pull through three loops. Okay, so there's my twisted stitch. Then yarn over pull through two and I need to do another twisted stitch so I'm just going to flip this marker over to the back okay so hook out of the live loop pick up the loop under the marked stitch hook back into the live loop yarn over pull through three yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two okay I'll get rid of these markers and I'll just do one more row on top so you can see it really clearly okay 
So this is a standard forward pass, except remember we've got two twisted stitches to work and I've just got to the first one. Oh, that was my speaker turning itself off. Okay, so hook under the two vertical bars of the twisted stitch. This is a standard simple stitch and then here's another twisted stitch, so hook under both. And finish off like normal. Okay, I'll just pull these loops off. Nice and quick. Okay, so that is return pass short rows. I see there's no holes at all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.